My name is Kylie Renee Flukiger, and I am a flight software engineer at JPL. So I've been working with the Eigenlinear Algebra Library for almost two years now, and I wanted to share with you some tips and tricks I've learned, as well as an extension I've developed, in order to bring the library into compliance with flight requirements. So, the project I've been working on is the Coronagraphic Instrument, also known as CGI. CGI will launch on the Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, and its purpose is to directly image exoplanets around other stars. And the way it's going to do this is by actively suppressing the starlight in the camera image um, by effectively blocking out the star in the image so that we are then able to see and photograph the much smaller planets around the star. So as you might imagine, CGI is extremely mathematically intensive in its flight software. And in order to serve this need, the project chose Eigen as the numerical workhorse for CGI. So now let's talk about Eigen. So Eigen is an open source template library. It is available under the MPL2 license and it's used often in industry. Um, it's used in Google's TensorFlow library, which you would be familiar with if you like machine learning or AI. It is also used in the KDE uh, package of open source software, popular among Linux users. Um, and it's also used in smaller projects such as the robot operating system and Celestia and the painting program Krita. So if you go on Eigen's website, uh, it likes to tell you that it is versatile, fast, reliable, and elegant. Um, it's versatile in that it supports all sizes and numeric types and it offers a wide variety of decompositions, geometry features, and if you need something that isn't covered by main Eigen, it also offers some extra unsupported modules. Eigen is fast. This is mainly due to the fact that it is a header-only library. Um, there's no need to separately compile and link Eigen, as it is template code, so it will just generate the code that you use from it and inject it directly into your binary. It is not a separate uh, library to link. Um, Eigen developers focus on cache friendliness. Um, it's reliable. The algorithms are carefully selected. And due to the open source nature, uh, community discussion can occur on these algorithms. Um, optimizations can be made. And the developers are sure to uh, document any trade offs that they have made in selecting algorithms for the various operations Eigen offers. And lastly, Eigen is elegant. It has a clean and expressive API, and it offers extremely powerful functionality that you access through a simple function call. Um, I will say now that this is true. Eigen is elegant until you have to uh, massage it in a way to bring it into compliance with flight requirements. So we will see that here in a minute. This all being said, Eigen is wonderful for general purpose computing, but it is not an embedded library by nature. Um, and this becomes pretty obvious the more that you work with Eigen in a flight context. So we know in flight that we want code to be clean and concise, and we want to know what it's doing at all times. We don't want any secret surprises that are going on under the hood. Unfortunately, in Eigen, there is deep, deep abstraction that hides what's actually going on under the hood and uh, it hides side effects. So it may be doing things that you are not aware it's doing and you would never know unless you specifically look for those things or look at the source code. In flight, we do not want to use the heap after we are done booting everything up and initializing our tasks. Um, I can regularly and silently allocates to the heap. Um, it does this for constructors, methods, objects, function calls, it's, it's extremely rampant throughout the code, and this, we'll talk about this later, is the biggest issue I have with Eigen. Uh, for flight, you need to ensure compatibility with the flight compiler. This is easy when you're writing C98 or whatever programming language you're using for your hardware. Um, but Eigen code is complex, especially with its use of the templating in C++, and sometimes it does not play nicely with the flight compiler. So you can encounter little bumps in the road where you have to put a space between your brackets or something silly like that. Um, and lastly, for flight, we know that we want to avoid control flows that use recursion. 
unbound loops and the go-to keyword because these can, again, obfuscate or cause unintended behavior in the code. Um, but all of these are present in Eigen. They just, uh, again, this isn't developed with flight in mind. They just program it uh, with no memory or time constraints of any sort. So these are all things to keep in mind when you consider Eigen for your flight project. Uh, like I said, my worst nightmare with Eigen, and yours too if you decide to uh, use it, is dynamic allocation. Um, it's performed constantly throughout the entire Eigen code base. It relies on it, and it is a nightmare to deal with in flight. So it's not embedded by nature, but it does offer things about it that make it exploitable for flight. And the first of those things that I wanted to talk about is its use of the expression templates. So it uses this metaprogramming technique such that it's not necessary for you to compile and link a separate eigen object. Um, only that eigen code you call will actually generate into code and be injected into your final binary. It does not package up the entire eigen matrix library and all that it has to offer across all fields of math and dump that into your flight binary. So this means that you actually get a pretty small code size ultimately, only the eigen that you use will be included in your final uh, binary block. Eigen does perform dynamic allocation frequently, but it provides ways for you to monitor and try to control this. So the first way it does this is by giving you some preprocessor flags, and I'll talk about these in a second, that um, allow you to effectively turn malloc on and off. And that can be extremely useful for walking through code and seeing what is happening where. Um, it tries to offer functions that are overloaded for in-place or pre-allocated memory. Um, so it will try to let you instantiate an object up front and pretend that it allocates here and then allow you to use that object later, um, hopefully with less allocation, but that's not always true. That's not always the case. Um, the majority may be allocated up front but it will still, again, try to allocate. And we'll see an example of that. That still does not work for flight, even though they tried. Eigen is able to interface with C style arrays and pointers. This is great because it means you can use Eigen alongside your regular flight software. The use of Eigen does not have to infect the rest of your project by any means. Um, and this is also good because it allows you really fine control over your memory um, when you're able to tell Eigen when and where to exist, right? So that was uh, excellent. There's a specific object type I'll be talking about called map that is how Eigen accomplishes this feat. And lastly, Eigen allows you to configure the storage order and alignment, um, which is useful for when you want to do row versus column major and where you want things to be padded up to in memory. And lastly, a nice thing about Eigen is it ex it's extensively documented. So online, you'll find an entire generated library of all functions, function calls. Um, in addition to this, they also have a wonderful tutorial that teaches you the basics about Eigen. Um, they try to show you what happens under the hood in some situations. So there is really good documentation available for this open source library. Um, if you still have questions or you wanna dig deeper like I did, there's also a highly active community on Stack Overflow. The original Eigen developers are still active in answering questions and helping you out. Um, there are also mailing lists and a new Discord server. And the Discord server is where Eigen devs talk about the direction they want to go with, with Eigen. So that can be a really cool place to pop in and uh, get advice, give feedback, things like that. Uh, because Eigen is so well documented, it um, enables you as a programmer who perhaps needs to modify Eigen like I did, to dig into Eigen and start to figure out uh, what and where things need to be changed. So more on this in a minute. Okay, with all the background, let's now look at Eigen code. So the two objects you're gonna wanna become familiar with with Eigen are the matrix object and the array object. Uh, the matrix object is kind of self-explanatory. It's the object you will use when you want to perform linear algebra operations on your objects. Um, and then the array, on the other hand, is more general purpose. It actually is more similar to a C-style array, 
and you use the array when you want to perform coefficient wise operations. Um, there are fixed and dynamic sizes available for both of these types. Um, fixed lives on the stack and dynamic goes in the heap. Unfortunately, fixed types are limited to small objects because if you try to allocate a two megabyte object on your stack, understandably, you will receive a stack overflow. So for large problem sizes, you're limited to the heap, which is bad, but there are ways around this. I will show you. Um, and then between the two objects, you can freely convert them using matrix and array operations. And as long as you allow optimizations in your compiler, these have no overhead runtime cost. So that is great. Um, on the right, here is some example code. You see that we instantiate a dynamic eigen matrix. We want it to be three by three. Um, we set it to five. We set one of the elements to 100. We double it. And again, here you can see the free conversion to an array object so that we're able to uh, multiply coefficients by two. And then we have a pretty print functionality. And when you look at it, you see that the end state of the matrix is exactly what you would expect given the operations we performed on it. This looked great, except I regret to tell you it performs dynamic allocation. Um, it does this in this initial uh, foo instantiation because again, it's dynamic. So Eigen will attempt to put it in the heap and we don't want that in flight. This is not good news. So we kind of have to transition away from basic tutorial Eigen to a more memory aware Eigen. And when we do this kind of context switch, we're going to turn away from matrices and arrays and focus our attention on the map, ref, and block types. So we'll start with map. So map, pretty much, I like to think of it as a smart pointer in that it knows its address, width, and height. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So you give it a pointer to memory and it maps over that memory an eigen object. Um, this is useful for taking chunks of pre-allocated memory as well as changing the data shape. So on the right here is an example of using a map. So you can see that we do our initial heap allocation. We can't get away from heap allocation, right? We just want to do it in a controlled fashion. So here's our initial allocation. Um, and then we instantiate a map over this region. And it's mapping this region to a dynamic matrix. That's the template of type here. And we say, start at foo data, take three rows and take three columns. And from here on out, we're able to treat it exactly the same way as we treated the matrix before. We can set a value to 100, we can double the array, and then we can print it out. When we print it out, you see that foo looks exactly the same. It's what we wanted. It is set to tens with 200 in the middle. Um, if we look at our original buffer, foo data, you can see that um, it is the same data, but in a different shape because it's just a pointer, right, to contiguous memory. So this is an example of how map will actively change the data that you give it. It will alter the memory, but it will present that memory to you with the appropriate stride and dimensions that you specified. So maps are extremely useful in Eigen. The second type we want to talk about is ref. Um, ref is commonly used in Eigen function parameters. So you use it when you don't want to introduce unnecessary copies. Um, Depending how you add const and ref modifiers to these parameters, you can allow it to be read, write, or constant. Whatever you decide is very useful. Um, you can take a ref to a matrix or a block. And um, a block is a reference to a submatrix. So you can say like block of three by three of my original huge array. And now you have a direct reference to that memory region. So um, when we talk about blocks and maps and refs, there are some cache considerations that you have to be aware of. So a design pattern that I developed for CGI is to upfront allocate a large buffer. You can see here on the left, that's what we do with buffer data. Uh, I kind of wrap it in a map just for readability. This step is not required. And then I decide later on after this initialization, that I need a three by three array. So instead of directly instantiating it, I refer back to my big buffer and I say, hey, I need a three by three chunk. So I take a block three by three. 
and I ref it into a matrix. Um, and then I say set this matrix one through nine and print it out. So on the right, you can see foo is what we would expect. It's a three by three matrix, one through nine. Great, that's what we wanted. But you have to be careful because when you use the block, it literally takes a three by three upper left chunk out of the original buffer. So when we print the buffer out, you see that foo is actually not even contiguous in memory. Um, we have introduced enormous gaps into the data. We have a ridiculous outer stride that we definitely did not intend when we, all that we wanted was nine values in a three by three shape, right? So you need to be very careful because block operations can be useful and it may be what you want in some scenarios with linear algebra, but it has enormous cash implications potentially. So be aware of this. Um, I had to switch from the block-based approach to a map-based approach when I found out that um, this striding was a huge issue. So we do the same thing. We allocate up front our big buffer. Um, we, again, take a three by three matrix out of it. Um, but this time we put this information into a map rather than a ref to a block. So we set this map one through nine and print them out again. Um, you can see that the map looks exactly like we wanted it to, one through nine, three by three array, looks exactly the same as the block ref, right? Um, but when we print out the original buffer, now we see that it's contiguous in memory. It goes one through nine all in a row. There, the outer stride is one, which is what we wanted because this is great for cache performance. And additionally, if you ever switch from using an eigen object to using a C style pointer, which you might find yourself doing for speed reasons, um, the data will be contiguous, which is what you expect with a pointer. Um, using a block where you should have used a map so that the data is contiguous can result in bugs that are kind of difficult to hunt down because when you print it out, it looks correct and normal, but under the hood in the memory, things do not look the way that you think they do. So. Um, it's the same shape the final matrix is when we print it out, when we use it, but in the underlying memory, it's a different layout. So this is very critical and you want to make this decision between map and ref of blocking early because there's no implicit conversion between the two. So all this being said, all these cool tips and tricks uh, being employed, there may still come a time where you realize that this is not sufficient to bring Eigen into flight compliance. And at this point, you, like I, excuse me, um, may find that you need to extend Eigen. So again, luckily Eigen is open source. You are freely able to dig into the source code as deep as you want. Um, but you will begin to find that things are not as nicely documented and wrapped up in a pretty bow as they are for the API of Eigen. Um, on the right, you can see here, this is an example of Eigen source code. It's uh, dense, impenetrable, hard to read. You feel like an archeologist trying to dig through this code base and figure out what's going on on the inside. Um, internal structure is not really documented like the rest of Eigen is. Uh, so I kind of had to swap from using documentation to using tools. The tools that I found particularly useful were GDB so that I could step through the Eigen call stack for the functions that I was interested in, uh, Valgrind to kind of study the memory usage, and NM so that I could dump object code and in, uh, inspect what was going on inside. And uh, a little tip that I will give is if you use the dash C flag with NM, it will take the templated code, which turns into garbled, not readable uh, characters when you dump the object code, it will take those and print them in an actual human readable format and tell you that the type is a double matrix column major. So the dash C flag was extremely useful for me in developing this extension. Eigen provides valuable developer macros. I say developer because they say that they are meant only for power users and for Eigen developers. But um, First of all, we are power users. And then when we begin to modify Eigen, we also become an Eigen developer ourselves. So I used some of these flags. Eigen no malloc will directly turn off the heap allocator inside of Eigen. Um, that's useful 
when you need to decide if heap allocation is actually occurring. The more valuable macro that I discovered was Eigen Runtime Nomalic, and that will introduce a switch into the code that you can actually programmatically turn on and off throughout execution. So this was helpful because in the beginning, I want to perform my upfront bulk heap allocation, and then I want to turn heap off. So then for the rest of execution, I know that it's not being used. So that was the most valuable flag that I discovered. And then this can be helpful. I get internal debugging. Um, Eigen is full of print statements um, that are turned off, obviously, but if you turn this flag on, if you define it, um, it will print out uh, kind of what Eigen is doing and the state of algorithm members and things like that. So Eigen offers you some ways to start digging into its internals. So CGI is required to compute the more Penrose pseudo inverse in flight. Um, this is a an intense algorithm in both space and time requirements. Um, there really is no way for you to roll your own more Penrose pseudo inverse algorithm uh, for an embedded platform in a reasonable amount of time. So it was critical for me to be able to take the Eigen and modify it myself. Um, I chose the BDC SVD class, um, which gives you a way to take pieces of the decomposition and use them to compute the pseudo inverse. So on the right here, you see my initial attempt to use the BDC SVD class. Um, I tried to use an eigen pre-allocated uh, option, um, turn off the heap and then call compute. But what I found and what broke my heart is that when I did this compute call, eigen failed. It asserted and it aborted the program because it tried to allocate to the heap. Uh, this was such a bad thing to discover. But using the tools that I outlined, I stepped through the compute call and I was able to discover when and where Eigen was trying to allocate to the heap. So ultimately what I ended up doing was finding every instance of heap allocation and instead pre-allocating a buffer of the required size for my problem size and passing it in so that it could be fed down into all these uh, sub-function calls inside the call hierarchy. So I'll save you the gory details of the source code. If you're interested, this code is available. I'll tell you more in a minute. Um, but you can see I had to take really pretty one or two parameter functions and pass them over a dozen parameters so that these could be fed down into the places where they were needed. Um, you can see here in the top middle, Eigen is aware that it does heap allocation. They're aware that they have temporaries inside their code. Um, so I had to take the opportunity to go through and fix these myself, as well as fix things that were not marked as temporaries that were actually temporary. Um, one other thing I noticed I was able to do is in some situations, because I knew my use case, I was able to remove um, optimizations that were not necessary for flight um, that caused heap allocation. And I was able to rearrange some code because in the way that I was using it, the rearranging would eliminate a temporary. So there, there are ways to go into Eigen and really rip it out and remodel it in the way that you need it to be. And you can see bottom left here, I had to go as deep as the matrix base header in the core of Eigen to eliminate all of these temporary buffers. So ultimately I was actually able to, I was able to do it. Um, on the right here, I had to eliminate some code for space on the slide reasons, but you can see I pre-allocate some things and then when I call compute, it didn't assert. So uh, after all of that work, using all of these tips and tricks, um, as well as no alias, which will tell the compiler that Eigen is free to copy directly into the destination, there's no need for an intermediate buffer. Um, I, I finally had a solution that satisfied CGI flight requirements. And when this finally all came together and worked, I was so happy and shocked, but thrilled because this was difficult work and we needed it for flight. And now we have it. We have a malloc free more Penrose pseudo inverse solver. So if you are interested for more information about Eigen, here is a link to the Eigen website. And then if you would like to look at the malloc free pseudo inverse code, this is available publicly open source 
at this link to a GitHub. So that is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your time and I hope you have a great day.